Tab Nation, it's your boy Tom, and today we're going to be talking about, do you have too many hotkeys? I mean, there's been so many times where I've had programs where I'll have like 10 different hotkeys, and it's kind of annoying because for two reasons, it's taking up a lot of my keys that I might want to use for other scripts or just need in general for maybe like gaming or something. And it's also sometimes can be hard to remember. Okay, I want to do this one function. Was that F5 or F6? I can't remember. So I'm going to kind of show a way to really condense that stuff and make it visually easier to remember what you're pressing when you do that. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some code here. So there's really four options that I think are by far the best ways to do this. Obviously, there could be other ways. And if you do have other ways outside of what I explained in this video, definitely put it in the comments below. I'm curious to see what other options I might have not you know, thought of in the uh, when I was making this code. So right here, we're going to use F1. This is just for the GUI version of what I want to do. So if you're a visual person, you want to constantly be able to see those buttons. I've done this in Zoom to like auto mute, auto close out of like a whole bunch of stuff, what not. And all it does is just in hotkeys that Zoom has built in, but I can visually see it versus having to remember them all. So we just did a basic GUI here. Uh, I used the smart GUI creator. I've done a video on that if you wanna see it. I'll throw that in the description below. Uh, so I'm gonna use GUI always on top. You don't have to use this if you don't want to. That just means when the GUI opens, no matter if you're focused on Chrome or whatever, that GUI is going to still remain visible to you. It's not going to go behind that window. So you use it if you want or not. It's whatever. <laughs> so I'm just using buttons here. You can use pictures if you wanted to. And uh, I just have G, which is basically go, go to. Button one, go to button two. These are basically the handlers. You can obviously rename them to be a lot better than what I put here. And then this is what you want your button to be called. So if you want, I'm just doing, you know, button one through eight. Obviously, you can add as many as you want or as little as you want. But you, you know, like you could put stuff a little bit better here. Like, you know, if you're using Zoom, you could put like mute all, and that's fine. And so what happens is when I press on this button, let's actually get a visual of that. Something to get ahead, press F1. And here's my GUI here. Now you can obviously change the coordinates. I just have it opening right there. And you, if you want it two rows, you can. If you want it, you know, one single row and then kind of make it almost like a toolbar at the top of your screen, that's what I usually do. That makes it a little bit cleaner. So... As you see, like, okay, I'm on Zoom. I want to mute everybody. I'm going to click this. It's going to do trigger this, the handler. Go to button one, which is right here. Button one, you're just using the colons here. And we're just going to put message box. You press number one. Obviously, this is where you're going to put your code on what you want it to actually do. So mute all. We got that little thing, message box, pressed one. Obviously, your code would run there instead of a message box. Now, the other thing, too, is I have a toggle here, which is basically the way I always describe it, is a on and off switch. So the first time I hit it, it's going to switch to toggle. If toggle, display the GUI, which we just saw. But if I hit F1 again, it's going to untoggle, and it's going to go to this else, and that's GUI destroy. And all that's going to do is hide my GUI. Maybe I, I just want to, you know, I'm doing something else. I don't need to see it right now. Okay, I'm jumping back into Zoom. I press F1. It's right back there for me. So it's just a way to hide it and reappear it as you will. So yeah, and then, then just in case you didn't know, GUI show, this is just the name. So if you want to name it like uh, Zoom GUI or something, that's fine. That's just what's going to appear up here. As you see, I had it named Hotkeys originally. So yeah, let's go ahead and hide that. And obviously, you know, I got all these are the same. It's just, you know, if I press button six, display that I press six, so all that. And just make sure you put a return at the end. Now, another way you can use, do uh, kind of condense your hotkeys and an easier way to remember them is with context menus. This is definitely my favorite way of doing it. I think this is a awesome built-in feature to auto hotkeys. That's just, there's so much fun stuff you can do with this. And so F2, we're doing menu, my menu, you name it whatever you want as long as they're all the same. We're going to add, comma, and then what we want it to display. 
So here we could say, you know, once again, we could say like mute all. That could be it. And this is your handle handler. So I got item one handler, two, three, four. Obviously you can rename these to make more sense. You can name it to be like mute all handler. And it doesn't have to say the word handler. I just think that's easier. And that's when I click on there. This is basically at the end is your go, kind of like in the GUI, but you don't have to put that G in the front. So this is going to jump down here when I press it. And it's going to say message box, you press item one. Uh, another thing too, I want to show you real quick, actually, that's very helpful is you can put a one, a two, a three, a four, and a five in the front of these. And what that's going to do is, so I'm going to press F2 and there's my context menu. So as you see, it says one, two, three, and then it has like the name. So one, mute all. So I can do two things here. I can click with my mouse manually on mute all. And I'm going to get that message box. Obviously, this is where you're going to put your code for whatever you want it to do. You want it to mute or whatever. But the other thing cool, too, is I don't even have to use my mouse. You know, I can have my hand up here. So I'm going to push F2. And then I'm going to push 1. And it's automatically going to select that menu item for me. So that's a great way where you can just real quick be like, doo-doo with your hand. Versus even having to use your mouse. Or drag your mouse. Maybe your mouse is on the other side of the screen or you know, depending where you have this popping up. Um, but it is going to, as default, it's going to pop up wherever your mouse coordinates are, as you see here. But you can change that if you want it to pop up always like in the top left corner of your window or something. So you can definitely play around that. You just add X and Y coordinates down here. And as you see, I just got all my item handlers. You can add as many as you want. Um, you can add sub menus too. I did a video on that, so check that out if you're curious on um, a little bit more detail into context menus. Definitely look at that. Now, I've done videos on both of these pretty detailed, so I'm not really going to show you them. I'll put these in the link below, in the, or a description below, I'll put the link. So I've done videos on these, and there's no point in covering them. I just want to shout them out. So we got Redial, uh, Redial Menu, I guess is how you pronounce it. I have that link here, and that is basically this really cool menu. Hold on, let me see if I can get a picture of it real quick after the ad runs. Yeah, so you can design really easily here. Uh, let me see if I can find an actual time where I use it. There we go. And it creates, like, really cool, like... I mean, it's like a GUI, but like very fancy. So definitely check out this video. Like I said, in the description below. The other one that's pretty awesome is quick access pop-up. This is also another way that kind of does like the context menus, but without really you having to code, you're just kind of putting the information in. Once again, did another video on that. And I'll also link the website where you can download this through uh, for free. Um, or there's, you know, like paid versions if you want to help donate to keep the process going. Definitely something you should, uh, you know, if you got some extra change, throw it his way. He's done some great work. All right. Like I said, if you have any other ideas on ways to really condense and not have to memorize so many hotkeys or take up so many buttons on your keyboard that I didn't cover in this video, let me know. I might expand on this video if I come up with a lot of other ways to do it. It's... By far, my favorite is the context menu. Which one of these four do you think is going to be your favorite? All right, guys. I will see you on the next video. Bye.